Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Las Vegas at Inter IBM Interconnect. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the event and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, Dave Vellante. Our next guest is uh, Don Bulia, VP of Cloud Services with IBM. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So cloud is hot, cloud services are everywhere. So cloud seems to be sprinkled in all the different features in IBM. It's the hottest topic here at Interconnect of the three shows, the top trending conferences we've been tracking over the past you know, three months and now on site on the show for the past three days has been cloud, mm -hmm. um, internet of things, and big data. Yep. So where does cloud services fit in there? Explain what your role is in the organization and what you're focused on. How does it connect to the new way, the new IBM, the new way IBM is doing, doing business? Right, so as you said, cloud is everywhere, so that's certainly uh, the case for pretty much all the units within IBM. Um, I'm from the systems and middleware unit, um, and what we talk about with cloud services is really you know, moving our um, traditional middleware you know, closer to the cloud, deploying in different types of cloud, deploying as a service, um, and also integration between clouds. So the integration for clouds really um, is that kind of bridge between the system of record uh, mm -hmm. where most of our middleware runs today and the systems of engagement where you see things like Bluemix and you know, public cloud via soft layer. So that glue, if you will, between those two is really where the cloud services is. Is systems of engagement a product or a concept? It's a concept, uh, it's an approach. Um, <laughs> Framework, <laughs> a mindset. <laughs> well, it is, and, and there's a little bit of a, of a speed element to it as yeah. well. So when we talk about systems of record, typically think of your bank data, your yeah. airline reservation, these are things you don't want to get screwed up, and so you have to have them. Database middle with a full, you know, there, hardened exactly. solution, like a data lake. Correct, okay. so you go into the systems of engagement, and now speed becomes the essence, right? So yeah, more how dynamic. Fast, yes, how iterative. Um, and, and speed is typically uh, combined with context yeah. and analytics and insight, so that combination just sort of runs at a very fast pace. So like, a, like a data ocean? Uh, it could be a data ocean, like yes. A, so data lake, <laughs> I had to get that in there. That's, a, we, that's our debate all week. Do so. you like that term, data ocean? Um, I don't dislike you, that you term. Data lake? <laughs> no, what do you think da better? Data I lake hear data lake more often than I hear data ocean. Yes, put it that way. we hear it too, um, but we sort of question data lake. We yeah. think data ocean is maybe a better. Well, we don't think they're mutually exclusive, but data lake to me reminds me of batch. You know, there's no speed boats on the lakes, there's no waves, there's no whales. Um, so yeah, ocean certainly gives a bigger connotation to it. I'll, I'll agree with that. Um, really, <laughs> you don't have to agree with us. really, management becomes the issue though, because if you don't, then it becomes the data swamp, right? And, and nobody wants that. No, so right. that's, yeah. that's really the uh, the real key to. But to real time, with. I mean, the concepts of in streaming, the, the stuff that's going on in cloud, in software now, dynamic, agile. You're seeing all kinds of stuff going on in the software development life cycle. Mm -hmm. and then how software has to be more adaptive, more intelligent, that's the cloud promise, right? That's like Correct. the new middleware. The new middleware is changing, pass and cloud, things yes. of that nature. So that's a complex area that's kind of in flux with innovation right now. Can you share your perspective on this dynamic area? Because there is new waves of data coming in mm -hmm. that's uncontrollable, retail has Black Friday, there's surges, there's these predictive analytics and to get forecasts on, on, on what's going on in right. that. that changing sea of data, if you will? Yeah, so services and data both. I mean, I think what we find in the middleware team in particular is you have to reimagine some of these things. Uh, the core elements are still there, so people still need runtimes, they still need databases, but when they put them into a cloud context and a cloud native type context as well, um, the management system's different. You, know, you pointed out the volatility of, you know, kind of the Black Friday could occur at any time. That tends to be the profile of most mobile apps. So, you know, you need to really rethink how some of these things end up, you know, getting delivered. But at the end of the day, people still have runtimes. They had runtimes in, you know, the system of record. They have runtimes in systems of engagement. The difference, I think, is again the speed and velocity, the tool set you use. So we talk about DevOps in both, but the the speed and cycle of DevOps in you know a traditional environment versus a cloud tends to be a, you know an order of magnitude of difference, right? Um, so that's kind of the marrying of those things. So you talked about on middleware being a sort of a, a, a linchpin of portability across different types of systems, systems of record, systems of engagement. But is it also not as well the linchpin for hybrid, cloud, on-premise, public? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so the port about that a portability bit. is key. Uh, at the end of the day, that's that's really what people want is choice and flexibility. So if I decide to deploy a workload here today, I may decide to go to another cloud tomorrow. I may decide to pull it back for different reasons as well. So that element of portability is there. Um, there's also what I said before about the different speeds with which uh, certain clouds work, right? So again, if I'm talking about a traditional environment, that's going to be you know have a set of processes against it. Um, in the in the new world with mobile, you know, that's going to iterate much faster, and we use integration as kind of the buffer between those two. So if I want to connect back to my traditional database, maybe my mainframe data, um, that's where most of the interesting stuff still lives. So my mobile app is really with a presence that people see on the engaging side, but anything interesting has to flow back. So how do you manage those you know, uh, areas between the two clouds, so to speak? So that e element of integration in addition to portability. So interesting, let's define interesting. Interesting is value, high value transactions. <laughs> Right. Yep. At that's the end of the day, the, it's still about transactions, it's right? The systems uh, of record that <laughs> yes. sort of document all this yeah. stuff. Yeah, we can abstract as much as we want. Uh, you know, Tom Rosemilly always says, you know, the infrastructure still matters. I mean, you, you still have to run it somewhere, right? Uh, we may not talk about it a lot, but you know, it matters when it comes down to you know people deploying real workloads. It's the same with uh, systems of record. That's where the interesting data is. You still, at the end of the day, want to you know close business, make new you know uh, business models and new revenue, uh, and those are going to be transactions. So, can we unpack the middleware, IBM's middleware for? portfolio a little bit and sure. sort of take us through the so, so yeah, so we have a, a pretty wide-ranging yes. set of capabilities there, right? So in our um, in our WebSphere portfolio, for example, we have you know run times, uh, messaging, uh, integration in particular tend to be the uh, kind of the major themes, um, and all of those things have a presence in both a system of engagement and a system of record. So you know it's not just one or the other, but how do you blend the two? Um, when you look at um, you know parts of our portfolio that deal with um, you know, things like performance monitoring and really the management of, of you know, IT systems, those also have presence in both, you know, traditional as well as, um, you know, more cloud native type use cases because at the end of the day, if you're managing something, you want to have insight end to end on, you know, that transaction, that flow, even if it starts out in the cloud with mobile and ends up back at, you know, the mainframe, you still want to end up with, you know, good visibility across all of that. So, when, when you, you know, we talked about the, the infrastructure is a service layer, the PaaS layer, or the SaaS layer. You're obviously contributing to the PaaS piece. Um, what's different about the cloud piece and the systems of engagement? I mean, sometimes I, I ask myself, okay, did, did companies like IBM just take what they had, <laughs> cloud wash it, and say, oh yeah, this is our part of our cloud portfolio. Right. And you're the, I'm inferring the answer is no. You had to make some changes. Ages that is correct. To the deep tech. So talk about what those are. Give us some sort of so, detail there. So yeah. So as you said, you know, systems of engagement, which you know, primarily driven by things like mobile, um, are kind of the the uh, the what. Cloud becomes sort of the how, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you get that done? What kind of systems and infrastructure and platform do you need underneath that? Um, when you talk about our middleware, the kind of the reimagining of it for uh, some of these new use cases in systems of engagement, typically what we end up doing is pretty deep changes to how it's uh, managed, how it's d uh, deployed, how it behaves you know, in an operational environment. So uh, again, traditional examples of middleware, you typically had tight control over things like scaling and availability and those characteristics. You move to the cloud, you start to see people do a lot more with automation, with policy, and so you know, that management model is now much more automatic. So if a spike comes in because of a Black Friday example, how do I then scale up all those resources? I don't want you to send me an email and have it happen like two days later. I want it done now, and I want you also to then take it back down again when you know everything calms back down and that's not the way that traditional middleware has been developed so there's a, a deep you know uh, engineering problem there that gets solved as we move forward so you can still use the core of the capability and so um, our customers get kind of the flexibility of understanding what the middleware was in both environments but the management model around it tends to move towards that accelerated you know automatic policy based policy driven kind so, of model so you built in a lot of automation elasticity around scaling and that's all programmatic now Correct. as opposed to you sending me an alert right so and there's an operator there doing something with it so the the set of api the entries and exits sort of Evolved? Can you talk about that? Yeah. So, so pretty much anything in the in the middleware space these days is, is instrumented, um, you know, with APIs, with uh, usually analytics as well. That's another characteristic we see as you move to the cloud, right? We can retrofit that in the systems of record, but in the systems of engagement, that's an expectation that you're going to have you know, heavy, heavy API, yeah. heavy analytics support, so that you can in fact drive everything, you know, to you know that that end goal of you know I, I can be hands off, it can just operate the way it needs to operate um, when I get these spikes. Um, 
it's just a different model and people are starting to get their head around that and we have to make sure the middleware actually can you know make that model work. So as we're well. talking with uh, Point Source, one of the uh, customers, ex IBMers, so it's always yes. fun to get to get the perspective. But they're doing very well. They're a big shop, they do a lot of mobile first stuff. Talk about the issues around cloud services that you're involved in, you're in, in the middle between old traditional and you know stable software. Right. right? I mean, you know, yeah, we don't block. like we don't like old so much. Sta stable, uh, <laughs> especially with my gray hair. I don't like old. old, old, old. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, mobile mobile really comes down you know, to um, proven, proven software. There you Let's go. go with proven Trusted software. Proven. So, Experience, so. reliable, proven <laughs> software. So, now the, the unreliable, cutting edge <laughs> cloud. Okay, <laughs> I'm killing myself, I'm digging a big hole. I bet it stops, my hole's getting bigger. Okay, so, so APIs, your... APIs, notification, security issues, I mean yep. they're everywhere, right? Yep. So this is the hardened issue, right? So the old stuff is hardened and reliable, so right. you got to move to a new world, speed, agile. Yes. What's the bridge? What's the, what's the connection there? So, so we, when we start talking about mobile apps in particular, we start talking about composition as opposed to um, just raw creation, right? So you don't just take out a blank piece of paper and start building something yeah. these days. And in fact, you don't want to because each of those components you have to build yourself then have to have all of these you know, availability characteristics, scalability characteristics, and that's hard stuff. So if you can, you want to sort of pick it off of a pallet of, hey, here's a data service, uh, you know, here's a notification service, and behind that are built-in in all the qualities of service. So in the new world, that's what those things end up doing. In the existing system of the record, we use integration as kind of that buffer. So you don't want to expose your, your endpoint from it's the system It's a thoughtful of the record. process, you got to think that through. You got to think yeah. that through and you, you want flow control, right? So most of these systems of record were not built for an environment where it was heavily volatile, mobile-based kind of uh, you know, applications. So you got to protect them from you know, coming and getting uh, too much load on them. And that's another kind of function of the integration and the API piece. So you know, how do I flow and you know, do the flows and limit when necessary um, you know, so that I don't flood the back end. You, know, you bring up a good point. We had Inhi Chusan on earlier today, and you know, talking about the Hadoop market, she says it should be growing much faster. And just to tie this off with your point is that, you know, the open data platform has been, con there's a lot of controversy around it. You know, the purists mm -hmm. are saying, why do we need this? What's the be benefit to customers? We don't need it. Some EMC, you guys saying, how does it hurt customers? Right. And the point is, what you just talking about the integration is not something that a pure play company like Cloudera thinks about because they only have one product. Right. And their customers aren't as comprehensive as say IBM. Yeah, it's easy if you can just sort of you know clean the slate and not worry about anything else that's ever gone in the past, right? Yeah, but I mean they're it, monolithic in their solution, open source in their approach. Okay, I buy the open source, but like you yeah. have to go to market and deal with and integration, security, legacy. Yep. And we do a lot with open source. So, you know, open source isn't bad and we use it extensively, you know, oh, it's most, awesome. of, yeah. most most of what we yeah. do, especially in the systems of engagement space, is based, you know, in some form on, on open source. But to your point IBM's betting on open source. Correct. Like everybody else. Correct. And but nothing gets done that's interesting in the mobile space, in even the analytics space, without incorporating some of that system of record data and services. Yeah. So it's really the That's connection table back. stakes, the integration with system of record, legacy. Correct. That's called legacy, kind of blanketed over. Yeah. But that's legit stuff that's important, called yeah. I mean, running think, your business think on about data. Your, think about your banking app, your yeah. airline reservation app. It's not very interesting if all it's doing is showing you, you know, nothing from you know the back end system of record. That's okay, what so you brought wants. up data swamp earlier in our little data ocean kind of riffing mm -hmm. around, it's kind of having some fun with that data lake versus data ocean, which is a fun conversation because it, it's provocative, brings up some new things. Mm -hmm. You mentioned data swamp. What is a data swamp in your mind, and how do people? How does that happen? I mean, it's just like I plan for a lake at a swamp or <laughs> ocean. Turn. I'm like, what does that mean, and and what does it come from, and what's what's the, some of the uh, triggers for that? Yeah. So I mean, I think it comes down to to management and flexibility, right? So at the end of the day what everybody's looking for out of the data lake kind of concept is how do I get you know everything into one place so that there isn't you know 15 copies of things going when I don't need to that I can't find things because they're not connected together so that's the that's the good side the bad side of course is when the management system behind that breaks down then you know you can't find stuff or stuff gets lost or stuff isn't optimized for where it needs to be so this notion of tiering as well you know as you put everything into one big pool you don't want it all on the most expensive you know storage media if you can avoid it you'd like to be able to you know sort of scale stuff stuff back maybe you know all the way back to tape to be able to you know archive and store and get you know the right price performance for what you need and so if you're doing the data lake concept in my opinion correctly then you know you really need that you know robust management system to kind of move data around where it needs to be yeah and and this and that's not an easy task if the bigger you are, yes. Yeah, unlike the mainframe business we learned yesterday, the more workloads it takes, the better it gets. So right. 
data right. is kind of like the opposite, right? Yeah, the more data you come in and you're not paying attention, correct? then and you're going to get swamped with, you know, so it becomes a policy-based thing as well. We were talking about you know, using automation and policies. A lot of these you know, tiering technology and the management practices have to be the same way, right? I have to have policies for how I do that and how I interact with that data as it grows. And it turns out we have some really good, deep technologies there in terms of you know, our storage yeah. portfolio that really allow us to do that. Okay, so that's not sort of middleware that's It's not middleware, but it is reusable. systems. So it, it is systems, It is right. systems, yeah. And, okay. and there's a cloud, you know, there's a set of cloud capabilities there too to tie it back to my own role, right? I mean, cloud storage is, is, a, is a big deal and being able to, in fact, uh, you know, integrate between existing, you know, storage, uh, you know, things you have in uh, an on-prem or, or even a system of record with, you know, some of these new object and file-based storage, you know, media they might have in the cloud, it, it's, it's a big problem, right? How should customers think about this? I talked earlier about the, the, the I'm a simple guy, so the infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. How should customers think about consuming that? Should they think about consuming a solution, a, a set, of, set of services? Should I think about you know, feature sets within each of those layers? How is IBM going to market? So I think it, it comes down to, from a personal perspective, the amount of control you think you need to exert you know, on the system, right? So okay. if, if you want the hands-off approach, then the, the software as a service model is kind of the, you know, here's a subscription, you know, onboard very quickly, and you know, we manage everything for you, or, or your provider does. As you go down to the next level with platform, you get, you get more control, right? Now I can talk about what kind of middleware I want to deploy, maybe you know, use policies and automation to scale it out, but I still have control. I may be even building applications in that particular model myself. Um, the infrastructure layer, of course, now you take on all of the software you know, parts of that. And so if you have you know, a very specific need to control everything about that software stack, then you know, the infrastructure approach might be the right one for you. So it really depends on the workload, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially when you get into specific workloads with performance characteristics. Uh, some of what we can do with soft layer, especially with bare metal, gives us options there in terms of things that you wouldn't normally consider as viable cloud workloads suddenly become possible because you don't have to deal with you know, the overhead and penalty of things like virtualization. So you can do some very deep uh, optimizations, but you know you can also have uh, you know, the hands-off approach, right? So it's really a question of which okay. level you'd like to go So I'm in. curious as, Don, as to what the co customer conversations are like, and I'm sure they're in all three of those categories, but let's take a big bank, you know, the, the sweet spot of, right. of IBM's you know, customer base. They're tech savvy, they're often, oftentimes very much leading edge. They're, they're cloud paranoid for certain core <laughs> applications. What's right. the conversation like with that class of, of customer banks, you know, insurance companies, you know, whatever. Yeah. Sort so, of. so I mean, if you go through the three layers here, right, the software as a service one, we tend to see those as um, what would have been packaged applications in the past, you know, a, a, a function within the enterprise that they can see outsourcing to some degree because it's not core to what they do from a competency perspective. That's why you see a lot with CRM in some cases with, um, you know, things like, you know, talent management and HR type functions, because those are things that you can imagine putting out, you know, into a SaaS type right. environment. Um, as you go into the platform thing, they're looking for speed. So even though you know banks in particular tend to be a little more traditional, uh, maybe a little more conservative, they do realize that when you go to this mobile model, you can't develop in a six and 12 month release cycle. It's got to be you know days and weeks. And so uh, they recognize the need for things like a Bluemix environment, for example, for that rapid integra integration. Um, as you get into you know the the infrastructure layer, I hear more conversation there about um, you know setting up private clouds. How can I better manage my on prem you know data center and the facilities there so things like pure application system with patterns gives me that you know automation um, better cycle time better maintenance um, you know uh, profile over the course of it but I fundamentally haven't changed the middleware in that particular case it's still a system of record it, it, w it always will be but I can get a lot more out of the infrastructure by moving to a cloud model there how much integration will occur over time between those three layers? Uh, well, I think integration is key across all three. I mean, in fact, you know, we assume that everybody's going to be a hybrid cloud of some sort. How you decide to do it is going to vary by customer. But you know, take that example of I outsource something to a SaaS property, uh, I onboard with Bluemix for my platform as a service, and let's say I use Pure App uh, inside my enterprise to, to manage that. All three of those environments still need to talk to each other. My SaaS app isn't going to be an island, so if I outsource HR, the rest of my ERP systems are still going to be back here, so how do I integrate there? So uh, you're, 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 again, at the heart of that integration is really your, your middleware on in a huge portfolio, mm -hmm. so this doesn't happen overnight. So on a scale of one to 10, you know, how, how integrated is that massive portfolio today? 
Uh, actually, it, it's pretty well integrated. Um, we've, we've done a lot of work over over the years, um, even within the middleware group, um, to you know to truly truly come up with those connections and those integration points. Uh, SOA did a lot for us in that regard, um, in terms of being able to you know do a service layer and service approach around this stuff. Uh, we hear a lot of APIs now. API is kind of the new buzzword. It's really a form of integration to some degree, sure, right. um, and it's exposing you know those assets um, from you know maybe a traditional system or solar environment you know out into uh, the internet or to mobile apps or to other clouds. So uh, the terminology changes a little bit, and some of the protocols do too. I mean, it's a little simpler now with uh, some of what people do with APIs, you know, usually using technologies like REST, for example. Um, but fundamentally, it's it's still about service orientation. It's still about exposing these things um, in kind of a controlled way, and that gives us a, a way to you know bridge between these different. And, layers. and how about the SaaS portfolio uh, from SaaS to SaaS, being able to exchange data? Is that something it, that you it's guys? A, have? It's a big deal. So we have a, a technology called Cast Iron that does exactly that, um, and you know, it's for we call it application to application integration. Um, your example is perfectly valid, but the more common example, quite frankly, is that I'm using, say, SAP as my enterprise yeah, sure. uh, application, yeah. and I decided to start using Salesforce for one function. Right. How do I then connect and sync that data between yeah, those Mixing two? and matching. Mixing Classic and matching. mixing and matching. But as you go forward, we assume more people will have more SaaS properties, and then you have the SaaS to SaaS problem, and then the SaaS to on-prem. You know, That's more the norm, having mix and matches that take on a long tail distribution, big, yep. heavy, committed to niche yep. apps. Yep, and and you've got, you know, it, it comes down to if it's something that you don't think is a core competency for your business uh, to manage, maintain, yeah. et cetera, then you know, presumably somebody whose business is solely to do that is going to do it better, right? And if you can get your head around that model and deal with, you know, typically it comes with a little less customization. So you know, as you go to the SaaS model, it tends to be a little more simplified. But as long as you can work within those boundaries, then yeah. it tends to be a, a really good option in terms of you know, managing those things. So what's your plans for this year? Talk about your organization, your charter, your mission. I mean, you're in an interesting spot. You're like deal maker internally, you're brokering services, you're, your hands in a lot of uh, uh, pies, you're cooking many kitchens. Is that true? I mean, is that what? It, it does feel that way. So you're, I mean, you're a glue lay. I mean, there's yes. a lot of action going on around you, right? So True, so, you know, from my perspective, the name of the game here is we need to make sure that, you know, the, the newer cloud, you know, uh, you know, applications and workloads, that we can capture those for IBM, uh, whether that's capturing them with environments like Bluemix, but also with technologies we can bring from middleware. So, you know, our classic runtimes like Java, but we're also doing a lot with things like Node, for example, to be able to move into new spaces for new applications. So, not just the existing yeah. system of record, but the new stuff as you do that, too. So, I think that's a piece of it, and making sure that's consistent, so that a, a customer who engages with us here can also, you know, see, you know, some of those core elements uh, manifest themselves in That's a sweet spot for IBM. I mean, I think it's not really talked about because it's hard to market that on, on the top line, mainstream, but like your skills with integration or services is really strong. I mean, it's a company. That's like right. a DNA. Um, it's not that obvious to the people who don't understand the enterprise, right. but you, are you, that's your core sweet spot, right? I'm going to integrate old right. and new or proven with cutting edge. Yep. Right? Exactly. That's kind of your whole purpose. What are you going to knock down this year in your business plan? What do you, what's your, your objective? Well, you know, from my perspective, it's all it's all about promoting and getting the word out about APIs. So, you know, it's starting it's starting to happen. It's still early stages about for APIs a lot of and APIs and the API economy and API management. So, you know, it's really about using APIs as kind of the the gateway, if you will, from the enterprise out to these other clouds. Yeah. And it's you know, creating the API is is a good thing, but yeah. it's it's frankly the easy part it's, yeah. the, it's the how do you manage that API over time how do you deal with you know spikes in workload how do you deal with versioning it's uh, almost like electricity before a grid it's, it's, it's things happen in APIs they just like just just not show up sometimes something bumps them off they right. go off they go on and the so, JSON endpoints or whatever API it is right and so we tend to use manage uh, analytics Dynamic. to manage <laughs> that and look at what's going on and give insight into you yeah. know how is my API behaving uh, you know maybe we've got one person who's you know really abusing that API how do I filter that person out um, you know these are the things that you have to start thinking about because most of these APIs when they get exposed they don't have a, a predictable usage pattern right so you've got you know mobile apps coming in they could you know ge generate a yeah. spike and traffic at any time. The old way of capacity planning just doesn't work cool. in kind of the Well, you're cosmos. mixing and matching. So you got mixing and matching, you got diversity, especially foreign apps, not necessarily in, in IBM, others. Right. APIs are kind of a nice little interconnection. Yep. I get that. Um, what does getting the word out mean? Like, like community, open source? Um, 
we're, ecosystem? I think I think all of the above, okay. right? So you know, first it's making sure that that our clients get the message that yeah. this is you know a, a way to get this done, uh, that this integration space in cloud is is uh, you know all about connecting things yeah. and, and APIs. reliable, it's right. safe. Right. Yeah. We, we expect to do things um, with open source. Um, you know, we're starting to use things like Swagger, if you're familiar with that, in the API space. A definition allows people to kind of, um, you know, in a coherent way, talk about how this API, you know, behaves. Uh, you know, the parameters to it, the documentation of it, um, and you know, do that in a way that's kind of reusable uh, over yeah. a course of different things. So we expect to do a bunch of things in that space. Um, but you know, the the big deal right now is to to make sure people are aware yeah, uh, yeah. You know, that they need this. A so new way. People don't necessarily know yeah. that, that this is a problem. The yes. DevOps guys are all over it because they're born in the cloud, they're playing with APIs, um, but that's the norm now, which more than it will be, going Correct. more API mix and match. Correct. Correct. Okay, well appreciate you coming on theCUBE. Um, anything else you'd like to share with the crowd? Give them a, give a taste of the vibe. That's our, our question of the day is, what's the vibe of the show right now? I mean, it's new. It's three shows in one. Is it working from your standpoint? I, I think it is. You know, I think it's uh, it's been great to see. You know, I've gotten a lot of feedback on you know just the the notion of, of cloud and mobile and how that really is reshaping and re you know uh, causing people to rethink how they really want to you know deal with uh, not just their new systems but also their existing systems, right? And so most of my conversations this week and the vibe I get is people get it now. You know, this is different. This is something I need to do. Uh, we're not you know we're not in a conversation now where we have to convince anybody that you know this is a big deal. Uh, everybody comes to the table fully acknowledging that and now they want advice on you know, how do I make that happen, right? What are the best ways to do that? Don Bully, the VP of cloud services, an important role, the glue, the integration, that's a, that's a big you know, unspoken key <laughs> differentiator and important. If the API economy's here, uh, notifications, APIs, mobile, it's all, it's all running in the cloud. The cloud is the engine of innovation. This is theCUBE. We sent all of our content to the cloud. It's on siliconangle.tv, it's on Interconnect Go. That's an API-driven site, by the way. We rolled out a new, have you seen the Inter Inter Interconnect Go site? Mm -hmm. All yes, APIs, you know, there's a lot of APIs in there, all Absolutely. coming in from the crowd data. Go to interconnectgo.com if you want to check out all the keynotes on the main tent, the cube, developer action, and I'll see everything. See APIs in action. Yeah, see, see our <laughs> APIs in action, all from the crowd, trending hashtags, trending stories, see what's the conversation, join the conversation, and of course get all the access information from IBM, login required. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>